Well, it's about that time again, you know, got to talk some lacrosse. I know it's the end of July. So, you know, we got to, we got to talk about it. We're getting, we're getting really in, we're getting really, we're getting close. We're getting close. I know, I know, I know it's crazy and everything like that. So July 30th of edition, and I was waiting on one result, um, so that I could get this out earlier and everything like that. So the PLL came to Frisco, Texas this week. Don't believe what the PLL actually said. It's not Dallas. It's 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 boring old you know Frisco. It's boring old Frisco. Frisco is literally absolutely nothing of a city. I'm just saying that. <laughs> but I mean for real. Um. So yeah. So All Star break happened. And lots of teams in the PLL are still kind of banged up and everything like that. And you see the standings and everything like that, you know, it's fine. It's fine. You know, we, we may be looking ever so closer to the seven teams that will play in the PLL playoffs come September as, you know, week six came and went. And today was just a wild day this Sunday. I mean, the dogs played the archers in a game on ABC. If you watched it, I hope you did. Really, really good game. A lot of score. A lot of mistakes by both teams, but a little, but it was good. It was real good. Then Will Manny, different breed of guy, game winner for the Whip Snakes against the Chaos. That kind of saves their season a little bit. Um, Atlas beat the Chrome in the battle with the bottom two teams, 11 to 9, and then Cannons. You know, I know there's a lot of discourse on the cans right now, but I mean, who cares about all that? Rob Pinnell got the 300 goals. Marcus Holman, he was unreal. You know, seven points in that game um, between the cannons and the Redwoods. So, you know, again, standings are what they are. You know, archers are on top. Cannons and water dogs sit at four and two apiece. Chaos and Redwoods are three and three. Whips and Atlas are two and four. And then the Chrome just kind of sit there at one and five because the Chrome is terrible. You know, it is what it is. And then there's a lot. There's, you know, those host cities, they've been narrowed down a little bit to 26, like 30 or something like that. So we're getting a little closer. The cities are as follows. And it looks in. To be completely honest with you, this is more, you know, of, you know, what Major League Lacrosse did anyway with the, in regards to where the PLO wants to go, which, I mean, I, I kind of expected that. I kind of expected the, these are just, for the most part, MLL cities, you know, like you got Albany, you got Baltimore, Boston, Charlotte, Chicago, Columbus, Dallas, Denver, of course, you know. Kansas City, Louisville, you know, those are kind of surprises. Minneapolis, I would say he's kind of a surprise too. New York, Philly, Raleigh, uh, Seattle, Washington, D.C. All, all these are kind of just expected at this point. The regions, you know, Florida, that's like the only one that's kind of, you know, kind of weird and then no other really, you know, nothing else really, you know, like California, Carolina, again, there's three cities that, in Carolina, that could be narrowed down to. Got Connecticut, you know, could be Hartford. Got the Great Lakes, you know, Maryland again. Probably just going to be Baltimore again. If it's Minnesota, it's probably going to be Minneapolis. Somewhere in the Pacific Northwest, it's probably going to be Seattle. Um, the Rocky Mountains, Texas, Utah. You know, again, that's probably going to be um, Utah was where the, um, the 2020 season was held. You know, Texas can't really, you know, there's really only one place you can go in Texas. Really, it was it was an all right, decent crowd in Frisco today. Decent, I say, you know, maybe like two, 3,000 there in Frisco, at least from what I could see. Maybe it was less than that, but that's what I could see. And then the Rocky, uh, Rocky Mountain, of course, you know, like Denver, and, you know, stuff like that. So, again, mostly... Mostly old markets, really. A couple new ones. I know, like again, like Louisville, because they had the All Star game there, which I don't care for. But yeah. Um, PLO, PLO. Um, the you know, a lot of stuff has happened. The free agency period begins on Tuesday. That is August the first. So you have Rochester 
They have Holden Katoni now. You know, you know, they traded him to Philadelphia for uh, you know for Hunter Lumier, and then they hired Dylan Evans as an assistant. And then Thomas Conby, they got in for another two years. Colorado, they get Dan McRae as the new DC. Panther City gives Kyle Crawford the franchise tag. Saskatchewan again continuing to make moves. Um, Kyle Rubich, he's going to San Diego, you know, and in return, Frank Shigliano. Oh boy, big time name right there. Saskatchewan making moves, making a, making playoff type moves here. Chicliano, man, they, they got him. Wow, uh, Vancouver, you know, in a um, it, it's kind of weird for Vancouver right now. They're going through some changes. You know, they got Owen Grant signed, um, but you know, Kurt Malowski, you know, he leaves Calgary to become the GM and head coach. Rob Williams is going to be on the defense with him. Then Albany again, not. You know, uh, I know I know a good friend of mine is. You know, he he's. He might be pretty happy with with the moves that you know the that the Firewolves have made. Um, Thomas Vossen, he's going to Vegas. Sam Furf coming on over. Brett Mitchell and then Ty Kurtz, man, 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 one of the best players I've seen play this season in in college. That is a again a real good kid. Um, Halifax, you know. You know, Billy e. Smith, you know, guy who's affiliated with the team. I forgot his role. I forgot to put that in there. You know, he leaves Halifax for personal reasons. But they get Kobe, um, Cody Jameson you know, to stay for three more years. That's a real good thing right there. Um, Dane Doby's still going to be in San Diego. Cam Holdings still going to be in San Diego. Jeff Teat's still going to be in New York. Uh, Philly, you know, they... He re-signed Zach Higgins for three more years. Brian Cole stays in Georgia for three more years. And then a lot of stuff from the defending champs up in Buffalo. Frank Brown, Nate Cause, you know, one year. Um, the Great Dane, franchise tag. Ian McKay, Chase Frazier, both those guys have offers. And that's, like, basically it in the NFL right now. So we're still waiting. Schedule will probably be released sometime in September. I hope it's before the PLO Championship so I can make those, you know, things. So, the West Hill Lacrosse Association, everything is set for the playoffs. Hayden Dixon, 50 goal season for New Westminster. The Salmon Bellies are at the top of the WLA. Um, Devlin Shanahan, he's been doing some great things, goal tipping lately. You see the rest of the standings. Langley. In second place, Timberman, twelve and six. Victoria, ten and seven. And at the bottom three, the Lakers, the Birds, and the Adnex. Um, the Birds and the Adnex play tomorrow night. But that game does not matter, so therefore, there's no reason to talk about it. As it stands, the WLA playoffs: the two seed and the three seed. It'll be the Timberman and you know the Thunder of Langley. And that series will get kicked off on Tuesday. And in Victoria, you know, the Shamrocks will take on the new Westminster Salmon Bellies. The, you know, again, the WLA playoffs were kind of set, you know, really like a couple weeks ago, in my personal opinion. But, you know, but it is what it is. So the Shamrocks Salmon Bellies game with, uh, series will get started on August the 2nd. Um, best of five this year. For the first round, at least, um, the latest the Langley Timberman games can go is August the twelfth. The latest the Shamrocks Salmon Bellies series can go is August thirteenth. The WLA finals get started on August the sixteenth, and it could extend all the way through the 29th if need be. Um, major series lacrosse, their season is actually done. I know a lot of people are going to be talking about Lyle Thompson again, but he's done amazing things. You know, a lot of people have been talking. You know, there's been you know some Twitter discourse, but it doesn't matter. Um, he's done an amazing job for Six Nations, especially as a passer. You know, the whole, the whole Six Nations team has just been on a tear. 
this year. That's why they're 14 and 2. They beat Covert last night. And then Eli McLaughlin, you know, you know, the Ryger. He's been he's made such an impact. He's only played in Peterborough for five games so far, but he's made such an impact. And, you know, it's it's a really interesting, you know, series, you know, a couple of series we get. You know, Peterborough will take on Brooklyn in the more interesting semifinal. Um, I don't know when game six and seven are going to be announced as far as the dates and times are going to go. But the first five games are set. So August 3rd, that's when the series starts in Peterborough. And then it's, you know, on and off. Again, don't know when games in six and seven are going to be played because the two because the two teams have said absolutely nothing about you know when these two um, when these two games will be played. But Six Nations and the Kodiaks that series has been set. All the dates for that have been set. So August second will be the official start of the major series lacrosse playoffs and. It will start in Six Nations. Could go all the way to August the 15th. Now, everybody else, let's talk about everything else here. I know I haven't been talking about, you know, the Mento and stuff like that as much as I should be. But I'm going to let me, let me, uh, let me get, let me get myself up here real quick. Um, the expanded video review that's been approved. I know there's a lot of coaching changes and stuff like that, but I'm not going to talk about those like right now. You know, like um, like Syracuse got themselves a new uh, defense coordinator. North Carolina's done some things and everything like that. Uh, Athletes Unlimited, um, as far as that goes, Taylor Moreno, Sam Apuzo, and the rest of the gals out there are continuing to shine. Really good stuff there. Um, as far as the women's college game goes, there was a decision on something else. You know, the, it's not going to be 11-on-11 11 11 and 6-on-6 six six in the restraining line. You know, so that won't happen. So it'll stay 12-on-12 12 12 and 7-on-7 seven seven in the restraining line. And again, women's college cross rules are a little different than the men's game. So, you know, the fact that this was even a thing, you know, to try and get less players on the field, I guess, I Really don't I really didn't see the issue. Um, the upcoming um, the Canada Lacrosse sponsors these two um, the Double IJL World Junior Lacrosse Championships. Those are coming up along with the World Under Eighteen Lacrosse Championships. These are both box tournaments. They're not sponsored by World Lacrosse. They kind of need to sponsor it, and you know. World Lacrosse is saying, hey, if you play in this, if you play in either of these tournaments that are not sponsored by us, we might ban your we might ban some players, we might ban some teams from being members of World Lacrosse, which is kind of unfair. Um, you know, there's an under 21, under 19, under 20 for the field game for World Lacrosse. They have the sixes version for some reason, which is stupid, by the way. But you need to sponsor a World Junior Box Lacrosse Championship. You need to sponsor that. And I don't know why not, not everybody's pushing back on that because that's something that should actually be pushed back on. You know, we need more box players developed. I'm just saying, you know, it'll help them refine them, their skills in the cage, you know, in, in a smaller surface, you know, that could get them help for, you know, when the PLL, you know, you know, keeps going, you know, all over the country, you know, for field across, at least the U.S. anyway. And then, you know, there's, you know, the whole sixes thing that the PLL has been doing for the championship series for younger guys. So, you know, again, these types of tournaments are helpful for younger players to develop them and keep them, you know, keep them on you know, the right track to going to either the NLL, the PLL, or wherever they want to go. So something has to be done about that. There needs to be a junior box lacrosse championship that is sponsored by World Lacrosse, and that's all I'll say. And that, that that's the reasonable that's the reasonable outcome here anyway. That's the reasonable explanation that I can give. That's the only explanation I can give. And then the Mento Cup again, 
Um, the Orangeville Northmen, they're unbeaten. They're unbeaten still in the OJLL, who follow me on Twitter, by the way. And even in the playoffs so far, they're undefeated. Um, they will take on Burlington in the OJLL finals. That's going to be great. I know there's also the fact that um, the mental cup will be exclusively behind the paywall, which is unfortunate um, because some of the games for, you know, um, some of the other you know leagues and stuff like that had some games broadcast by a specific network that's behind the paywall that I'm not going to pay for because it, it's it's not worth it for you know you know like a couple of weeks of lacrosse it's it's just not I'm just saying so the junior Adnax in Victoria they're going to duke it out in the BCJ LL finals they're going to duke it out for the British Columbian um, Championship. And in Edmonton, the Miners, they will take on the Calgary Mountaineers. And, you know, Mountaineers just won their semifinal in seven games literally not even an hour ago. So, you know, like this happened an hour ago. So it will be Edmonton and Calgary in, you know, the Rocky Mountain Lacrosse League finals. So that's going to do it from here. Again, not much to say, you know, about, you know, like the PLL right now because, again, it's kind of, you know, kind of in a state where it's PLL and it's keep it's going to keep on going, you know, and everything like that. Um, again, a lot of the stuff has been, you know, kind of in, in the mindsets of people for weeks and stuff like that. I know a lot of people are angry, again, on lax Twitter, but, you know, it is what it is. Who, who cares? Who cares about what Lax Twitter thinks half the time? Because half the time, you know, I'm not saying everybody. I'm talking about I'm talking about like the guys who don't know what they're talking about. You know, some some of the other stuff, you know, like you know the whole, you know, is is the cannons better without Lyle Thompson discourse? Like we can we can deal without that. The cannons are doing great things this year. Lyle's doing great things this year. I don't understand. I do not understand the dichotomy here. Uh, but, you know, stuff that we actually need to be talking about, again, to grow the game of lacrosse, you need you, you need stuff like, you know, the, uh, a junior box cross championship. You need the Mitso Cup to not be behind a paywall, you know. You need, you, you need, you know, some of this stuff in the college game happening and the women's college game happening. You need all that stuff. All these working parts will grow the game faster. And we all need to respect each and every facet of the game, you know, whether it's box, whether it's field, or even sixes, which, you know, again, I'm kind of mixed on six, but we all need to respect the game and be respectful towards each other and what we're talking about, you know, because some of y'all go way too far. So, yeah, that'll do it from here. I will see you all again talking lacrosse in about two weeks or so. We're going to talk, you know, more PLL, how the PLL is doing is, you know, they're going to start going out west and stuff like that. And then, you know, they're going to Baltimore next week. And then I believe they're going to go west after that. And then, you know, you know, the Mento Cup might be set by then. So the four teams in the Mento Cup might be set by then. And then, you know, the Man Cup race is still going on and everything like that. And hopefully the Man Cup is again broadcast on YouTube. I, I really hope so. But yeah, I'll see you all next Saturday night at about 10.30, 10.45. It depends on when SummerSlam ends. We'll talk the IFL National Championship. NAL playoffs and whatever else in the indoor football scene is going on. Take care, have a good night, and I'll see you very, very soon.